League of Legends Pro Play has been around for over a decade, and over the years we've seen some pretty wild records that have actually happened in competitive matches. Starting off, we have the longest lasting professional match ever that took place between Janair and SKT in 2018. The series was tied 1 to 1 in a best of 3, and while the previous games had gone on for 46 minutes followed by 52 minutes, those numbers would quickly be put to shame. In one of the most record breaking games ever, the game lasted over 94 minutes, ultimately coming off the back of Janair catching out Faker. The game actually ended up lasting so long that the casters were just asking each other how each other's day was as well as what their dinner plans were because they kind of ran out of things to talk about and were just going with off-topic questions. So how's your night going? You know, it's taken some twists and turns I didn't see coming. Uh, I thought maybe getting some chicken wings tonight, but that was about three hours ago. Yeah. That's not happening. I was expecting to be done by about, you know, 9.45, 10.15, something like that. I have, that I have six days in a row starting from Tuesday. You know, that's pretty cool. I get two days off before, so that's nice. How many times does Janair play in that time span? You know, too many times, actually. And considering that this was the longest professional match ever, of course, a variety of other records came with it. Over the course of the match, there were six Elder Dragons killed, nine Barons slain, and though there weren't too many kills to speak of, Jin Air's Teddy managed to farm 1,456 CS on Sivir, while SKT's Bang farmed 972, both of which beating the previous CS record of 946. And despite this being a relatively low kill game, imagine going for 33 minutes without a single kill. In the 2020 LPL Spring Semi-Final between FPX and JDG, this exact situation happened in a game that took 33 minutes for First Blood to occur, which unsurprisingly is the record for the latest First Blood in professional play. Despite both teams having more damage-oriented comps, ultimately it took a 7th Drake to spawn to finally place a kill on the board. And even then, the Drake had already been taken when JDG's Yagao sniped FPX's Crisp for First Blood with one of Corky's big ones. And yes, apparently that's actually the technical term for what the big missile is called. Next, we have the longest winning and losing streak in competitive league history, and starting off with the longest winning streak, we have the Flash Wolves. In the LMS's 2017 spring season, the Flash Wolves were bar none the strongest team in the league, no questions asked. The way the LMS worked was on a best of three system, so if you won two games, you'd ultimately take the point and win for that match. And not only did the Flash Wolves manage to win every single match, after losing the first game of their first match of the season, they did not lose a single game for the rest of the year except for one game in the final. So even though they may have won 14 matches in a row, during those 14 matches they managed to win 28 games straight since after their first game they would always beat their opponents 2-0. And unsurprisingly, they would go on to win the league that season as well. Now while the Flash Wolves managed to win 28 games in a row, there was another team that managed to lose 34 games in a row before being disqualified from their respective league. That team would of course be Vevictus Esports, who you may be familiar with already for their less than impressive performances. This was a team that consisted of all female players in the Russian LCL League, and unfortunately it seemed like they were brought on more as a publicity stunt as opposed to actually competitive performance. For context on what I mean by a lack of competitive performance, they did not win a single game for their entire existence, and it took them 11 games to destroy a tier 1 turret. I mean, then again, it also took all of North America 10 games to destroy a tier 2 turret at Worlds this past year, but I digress. And despite somehow losing a game in 13 minutes and 4 seconds, that's still not even the fastest loss that's ever happened in competitive league history. Now when it comes to figuring out what the fastest pro game ever was, there's a little bit of disparity as there's kind of two correct winners, or losers rather. If we're going off the fastest game overall without any exceptions, we have another troll team versus top hard esports. Now despite their name, another troll team was actually a legitimate team that did in fact win games in the LTL, however due to a disconnection of their jungler and being forced to play the game out for v 5 they opted to let top hard end the game before a majority of their players had even unlocked their ultimates. And it seems that Riot wasn't too happy about that. So while 7 minutes and 30 seconds is the fastest league game ever, if we want to go for the record for the fastest legitimately played game, we have to rewind all the way back to 2012. Whoa. Here we have Armageddon versus the Koala Lumper Hunters at IEM Singapore in a match that lasted 11 minutes and 46 seconds due to a very fed team and from what I read it seems that Armageddon's team was actually just a Dota replacement team. Now admittedly I'm not 100% sure that last part is true, however I still think that this comment sums up Armageddon's performance pretty well. Now when we're looking at individual player performance, one of the best signs that you can see in a player is the number of pentakills that they have. And while in professional play you'd probably 
probably expect a recognizable face to be at the top of this list, I actually had no idea who this player was when his name came up. With an astounding 11 professional pentakills, we have a VCS player fittingly named Celebrity. In playing ADC for 7 years, Celebrity has shown that he can dish out some serious damage, and the enthusiasm of the casters and crowds certainly do not disappoint either. <laughs> And if you really did enjoy this video, consider commenting, liking, or even going as far as subscribing because it helps me as a small content creator and that way you also get weekly, informative, and entertaining content. And if you especially like this type of video, well I've got good news for you because I got one coming up in just a few moments that's the same as this but with world focused content instead. So I'll leave you to watch that. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day or night and I'll catch you all in the next one. Later!